am Tracy Coverley and I'm an artist full-time, currently working with textiles. How long have you been creating and how did you get into it? Uh, way, way back, 100 years ago, I trained as a fine artist at Loughborough um, Art College uh, and then went off and had a career on the railway for quite some time. And about four or five years ago, I decided that was it. I just threw everything away and then started all over again. And this is when I picked up textile portraiture. So don't know why, I've always stitched all my life. Um, but this just sort of happened by accident in a way. I started actually creating uh, three-dimensional dolls. So about this big of famous people. Um, and I did Derbyshire Open Arts one year and the room I was showing in had a lot of white walls. And I thought, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do though with those white walls? Because I had all these figures around. And that's when I decided, let's try it 2D work, which is really picked up. What is your preferred medium to work with and why? Right, well, as I've said, currently I'm, I'm working in textiles. And it's because I've never trained with textiles. I, I was a painter when I was at college. However, textiles is brand new in a way. Although I used to make clothes, using it to illustrate my thoughts, feelings, um, and obviously people. Um, I'm constantly learning. Every, every portrait brings up new problems, new hurdles that I've got to work my way through, just using scissors a lot and the sewing machine. What are your inspirations and influences? All uh, right, well, you, you can probably tell that the majority of my work's monochromatic, and I think that comes from my absolute love of old black and white films. I, I grew up on them and I don't know, I think that tonal effect that you get with black and white film is translated into, into my work. So popular culture obviously is, is a big, big uh, influence on, on what I do and who I choose to portray. Um, how has lockdown affected your creativity and how have you dealt with that? Lockdown has not had a massive effect on me, to be honest. The one negative effect it's had, the ability to sell externally, they've all short, so the gallery's short. Now, although you've got online selling, it's absolutely been swamped because there is no alternative. I am easily distracted normally, but now there are no distractions. For example, the pubs are all closed, so I can't just nip down to the pub or whatever. So it's helped me focus on the work and just make a whole, whole load. Do you usually focus on one project or have many on the go at once? Mm, right, if you've ever seen my house, you'll see there's, there's washing lines everywhere with portraits hanging and little bits here and there. I do try to stick to one, but you, you can't. And plus, I do a lot of commission work. I'm constantly juggling my time between those things and the things I want to do. So at the moment, I've got a big, huge quilt on the go. Um, that's the Beatles. I've got three group portraits on the go. But then I'm also playing with NME magazine covers and all sorts of things. So, Do you have a favourite piece of art that you have done? Oh, changes constantly, to be honest. Uh, but I do have a particular favourite, which really set me off. I was doing a quilt, and it was of a jam album called Sound Effects, which is, if you know the cover, it's made up of 25 photographs in a grid form. And my sister put it on a Facebook page, and it just went a bit mental. And as a result, I met a few people and got a few um, commissions. Um, and yeah, that sort of gave me the confidence to say, you know, I'm on the right track here. I, I even actually managed to get a commission off Paul Weller. I ended up doing some dolls for him of the small faces because he's a really big fan of the small faces. Do you have any advice for young artists? 
it's nothing new or exciting, my advice. It's just go for it, basically. I, you can waste so much of your life worrying about things and what if this happens, what if that happens. You should just go show it and be proud of it, basically.